Before we start, let us first briefly introduce the Japanese language. The users of the language are mostly located in Japan. The area marked in dark blue is the country Japan, and in light blue are the areas where Japanese is an important minority language. The following is its language family. We can see that Japanese is quite special, forming an entire language family by itself. The subject we、we'll、discuss here is the popularization in the Japanese language. On the next page, there will be some Japanese words. Here are a few things we should take note of. Firstly, the Japanese ts is an alveolar affricate, which can be compared with the palatal affricate ch. Also, the bracketed ts should be taken as a single symbol. It is pronounced as the initial sound of the word. Tsunami. Secondly, in native Japanese, the sounds t and t do not exist. This means the ta line in Japanese is ta chi tsu te to instead of ta ti tsu te to. Here are the words relevant to this topic, and the words in quotes are the corresponding English meaning. Tatami. 友達、うち、手紙、とても、男、父、机、手伝う、下、あと、待つ、夏、包む、地図、肩。建物、手。Question A asks you, based on these words, are t, ch, and t in complementary distribution. Question B asks you to state the distribution of these sounds, first in words, then using features. Question C asks you to analyze these three sounds, that is to say. Identify the phonemes and allophones. Question D asks you to give the phonemic representation of the phonetically transcribed Japanese words. Furthermore, apart from t, t, and ch, you may assume that the phonemic and phonetic representations of all other sounds are the same. In other words, apart from the sounds t, t, and You may simply copy the transcription already provided. Step one: We try and find the minimal pairs. Here we have divided the words into three groups according to the three consonant sounds. In the Japanese language, a consonant followed by a vowel is one syllable. So. Here, the three consonant sounds are marked in bold, along with the vowels they immediately follow, and each sound is labeled by a different color. We see that no minimal pairs are observed, which means that there is a high chance the three phones are in complementary distribution. In step two, we check their sound environments. After checking, we see that the sound t may be followed by the vowels a, a, or o. The sound ch can only be followed by the vowel e, and the sound t can only be followed by the vowel u. Since these sounds never occurred in the same environment, they are clearly in complementary distribution. In step three, we further observe the distribution pattern and environment of the three sounds. From the location of the tongue responsible for producing the five vowels, we see that the vowels a, a, o, which follow the consonant t, are mid or low vowels. Meanwhile, e, which follows the consonant ch, 
is a high front vowel, and u, which follows the consonant t, is a high back vowel. These five vowels are also all non-consonantal. This should be obvious, since they are already vowels, they cannot possibly be consonantal. Next, if we describe the distribution pattern and environments of the three consonantal sounds in words, we get the following. The sound ch occurs before e. The sound t occurs before u. And the sound t occurs in all other cases, namely before the other three vowels which are non-high. Recall that e and u are both high vowels. If we rewrite this in features, we get the following. The sound ch occurs before non-consonantal, high, and non-back vowel segments. The sound ts occurs before non-consonantal, high, and back vowel segments. And the sound t occurs before non-consonantal and non-high vowel segments. In step 4, we decide which of the three consonantal sounds is the default. As we can see from this table, the three sounds are in complementary distribution. Furthermore, because the sound t has the widest distribution among the three, we treat it as the default. Step 5. We now establish the rules for deriving the phonetic representations from the phonemic representation. If we describe the rule in words, we get the phoneme t is ch before high non back segments, and the phoneme t is t before high back segments. If we rewrite the rule in notations, it is as shown below. Here are the phonetic representations of the Japanese words for the last question, which asks that you write down their phonemic representations. Tatami, tsukue, tsutsumu. Tomodachi, tetsudau, chizu. Uchi, shita, kata. Tegami ato koto Totemo matsu tatemono Otoko teguchi te Chichi natsu tsuri So now we put our rules to use and change all t, t, ch sounds into their phonemic symbol t. We have marked in red the places that were previously ch, which is now replaced by the phoneme t. And marked in blue are the places that were previously t, which again is now replaced by the phoneme t. For the places where t was already there, of course, no change is needed, so there is no change in the color either. Lastly, we look at more information on the three sounds. Here we have circle them in red. According to our conclusion, the following t becomes the other two forms only under specific sound environments. If we look over to the green arrow on the right, we can see that the position of the sound changes from the alveolar to the palatal. This phenomenon is known as palatalization, which is why we mentioned at the start that this topic is called palatalization in the Japanese language.
The following are answers from the publisher, which can be used as a reference.